Let's see here. Hi, everyone. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Lana Marie Hooks, and forgive my, my technology here beeping, but my name is Lana Marie Hooks, and I'm the chief editor of Farside Co-Ed Book Club. Um, we are an editing and publishing consultant company, and so I wanted to give you a backdrop of who we are and our services, and just to be able to um, share our story with you. Um, so I'm gonna start from the beginning. Uh, we originally started out in 2005 as a co-ed book club. And I just had this crazy idea because I love to read and I just wanted to see whether or not I could just gather some people together, male and female, that we could uh, get together and read and begin to share stories. So um, I asked my mom at the time, I said, you know, what should we name, you know, the book club? And so she said, well, let me think about it. So give or take about an hour. So she came back and she came to my room and she said, let's call it Farside. And so I looked at it and I was like, Farside? And so she said, yeah, Farside. And so I, I said, like the comic strip Farside? And she said, yeah, she said, but, she said, it won't be, of course, their name. She said, but why don't you change the F to a PH and then instead of two words, make it one word, Farside. So that was basically the initiation of the name. So it's Farside Co-Ed Book Club. And so the name stuck. I laughed. I laughed because my mom had a, a really just a sense of humor that no one could understand but, but me, you know. Uh, but she was an avid reader and so like i said the name stuck with us and so i asked her though one more time i said but why why that particular name and she said because i know you're going to choose books that are going to be just truly from the left side from the left field and so i laughed because at the time honestly i did not know what books i was going to choose but Again, being an avid reader, I read everything. I can't even leave a grocery store without picking up different type of newspapers and things like that. So I, I picked up actually one of our uh, county newspapers and um, I was reading where one of the uh, uh, journalists had, in, had interviewed an author and her name was Sandra Snowden. And her book was called Horny and Saved. A Christian's, a Christian's perspective on sexuality. And I busted out laughing. That was our first book. I reached out to the author, Miss Snowden, and she gladly accepted the invitation. And she led the most lively discussion. We had it actually at a restaurant. And it was funny because people around us, they heard our conversation. And so they joined in and listened to her give a take on um horny and say, you know, and just a Christian's perspective about it. But it was one of our, like I said, it was our first one and it was the most liveliest discussion. Our second book was Hung, A Meditation on the Measure of Black Men in America by Scott Polson Bryant. Um, this one is near and dear to my heart because this was addressed to the men in our group and they began to share their feelings uh, about how it is to to be a black man in America and you're compared or reduced to your penis size. And so hearing them bear their soul, every female in the group, we just listen. That's all we did. Just, we just listen. Because when you get men to bear their souls, especially with females on a very touchy subject, it's one of those things to where all you need to do is just listen and just have a have an ear just have, have an ear to hear for me at the end of that one i was happy because we had created a safe space that they were open enough to just want to be able to bear what they felt about being just reduced to a penis size 
So that one was always hold near and dear to my heart. Um, we've had many more, but these are the ones that kind of stand out in my head. So I'm just kind of going back over things that we did, uh, uh, certain uh, book club discussions that we've had. Um, the other one was uh, Jeremiah Kamara. That one was heated. Uh, <laughs> it was he's, he's the author of Holy Lockdown. Does the church limit black progress? Now, we had this in my home. And he brought from one in one end of my living room, we had uh, ministers. The other end of my living room, we had black activists, and we had also had we also had agnostics. But that discussion was two hours. Jeremiah talked a straight two hours, and the questions he answered was dignity. The questions that were given were given with respect. Um, and again, it was it was a heated discussion. But I think we have we at the end of it, we all realized that we had a better understanding about what each party thought about that topic. So and about the black church. So we really talked about that. And again, a very lively discussion, and you know, but it was just one that um that was needed that is needed so the premise of far side co-ed book club was to bring together men and women in any profession that were avid readers to have a holistic discussion our roundtable discussions brought balance and insight to how men and women think about relationships religion historical works etc there was there was no topic that was not uh discussed um the selection of genre was unlimited like i said we didn't have any uh restrictions on that at all now from 2005 to 2011 we were just we we're just a book club but in 2011 spring we evolved from a book club to an editing company so um if you knew the the type of um Professions that we had, we had educators in our group. Um, we had graphic designers, musicians, writers, entrepreneurs, journalists, and customer care representatives. Like I said, we we went the spectrum. And so, in our discussions, most times we would edit the author's book. We were not nitpicking, and we weren't degrading, or we weren't, you know, making the the author seem like, oh, you just can't write. No, it was never that. It was always to see how can something be said better. And so uh, we noticed grammatical errors, um, language usage, and organization of content. So again, never ever to put down an author, no matter what book, no matter what book that we read, we never ever did that. We just always wanted to see how we can make a book better. So again, like I said, in 2011, we became an editing group. And so we had several projects under our belt. The first one was Nothing New Under the Sun. A book for thought leaders and teachers by Lauren G. Relaford. Uh, Becoming an Alchemist, Understanding Your Alchemy by Lauren G. Relaford. I Didn't Make It to the End Zone, My Mismanaged Marriage, First Edition by Terry Brown. God's Battle, Your War, Women After Righteousness by Sherelle Attaway. How I Loved Myself, my book. Um, Dirty Breath, Trapped by Rejection, my memoir, by me. And The World Didn't End by Janelle Relaford, in which that book actually, uh, she's an author out of New York. And she wrote me and she said some people had gotten, uh, I think it was social workers or people who worked with um, victims who had been, I mean, no, sorry, sorry, excuse me, people who had been victimized. And so she worked with these people and they had gotten a hold of her book and they used it for actually for a, uh, a conference there and, uh, and, and a workshop. So I was very, very excited for her. Um, also, no more hashtags, Remembrance and Reflections by Monica Leak, who is actually Farside's managing editor. And so I'm going to speak more about her later because there are wonderful things coming up. Um, in 2020, as the world was experiencing a pandemic, people losing their employment, 
entrepreneurship was rising. Um, loved ones transitioning, comp compartmentalized living, social distancing, working from home, police lynchings, presidential election, Black Lives Matter movement, racial wars, and international solidarity. Far side went into a hibernation. That's the only word that I can really use. We, we went to a hibernation. Um, it, the world seemed like it was cracking up. It's, it felt like it was going in reverse. But I sat down and I really thought about it. And I felt like the universe was really saying, stop. Just stop. Slow down and sit down. And so that's what I did. And that's what we all did. Um, we began to reflect on our life's choices. We began to reflect on um, what is our next move? What is our next step? How are we gonna, what are we, what are we gonna do really? So questions came up. And so these are some of the questions and I just wanna pose some of these questions to you. Um, questions that came up for us was, is this how you wanna live your life from this point on? What is it that you really, really want to do? How can we con contribute to making the world a better place? Your present employer, is it by choice or by how much money that you make? And let's be real. How has this pandemic affected your life and livelihood? The story you've been putting off writing, is it speaking to you now? Are you supposed to write a book, a journal, podcast, or blog? These were questions we asked ourselves. What are we what are we really called to do here? Are we going to continue this? Are we going to disband? Are we we thought about everything? A good friend of mine, um, he told me, he said, you know what I think was happening? And I said, what? He said, we are experiencing a hard reset. And when he said it, it smacked me. It smacked me in my bowl. It just, just went through me, everywhere. It just went all through me. And so I sat back and I thought about it. And I said, you know what? You're right. I said, culturally, economically, politically, religiously, socially, it affected every part of our lives last year. 2020 made us think real hard about what our purpose is. What are we really called to do? How are we going to navigate this new terrain that we're living in? It's funny, we, 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 we laugh about it, but it's really kind of serious. When we get dressed to go somewhere, whether it be the grocery store or um, you may be, still be working at your uh, employment, uh, or go, just go anywhere, go take the garbage out, whatever. What What is that one thing that you just, you have to do? You place that mask on. That mask has become a part of your attire. And I was like, how, you know, what, is this, is this the new, the new norm? Because truly we're not going back to what used to be prior to 2020. Those, those days are, are pretty much gone. Now we're having to logistically think about how we're going to move in the world. What, 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 what are our, what, what, how we're going to really leave our, 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 our imprint here and, and to make a difference. So these generations that are coming behind us and the ones that are here now, we're having to make some hard decisions and to really understand why we, why we were born. So again, having these hard conversations with self as with our team, um, we knew we had to take it to the next level. And that next level was publishing. Yes, we drank the Kool-Aid. So we're going to be add publishing to our tier. And this is our invitation to you. Writers, you know, people who have been had this 
the story in you for a long time, even before the pandemic. We're here for you. We want to be able to put you on the path to publishing your story because your story is just not for you. It's for those that have been waiting to hear you, been waiting to be even set free in themselves to 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 live out their life purpose, which is probably to write a story as well, to create. Um, we're in a new reconstruction period to do some wonderful things, some things that can really just set new groundwork, new foundation. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. No, I, I, I can't say that. But I know that it's worth it. And so my lane is to help you. Publishing, our team, to get your story in front of your tribe. This is your time. This is your time to say it and then let it go and let it do its work. So we are here to help you and, and it doesn't matter the genre because the genre you choose is the genre you choose. We're just helping, we're just here to help you with our publishing services to get it out there. Now I must say this, latter part of last year, our site was hacked. Yeah, hacked. I was devastated for a minute, but then I said, hold up, sit down, think about it. Everything else was falling off the grid. The world was just going in madly in different directions. So I thought about the site and I said, you know what, maybe it's just telling me it's time for a new one. Maybe it's telling me it's time to really rethink everything. So even as we speak right now, Lauren G. Rilliver and her services, this lady's web team is actually revamping our site, but it doesn't mean you can't contact us. You can contact us by emailing us at firesidecoed, and let me spell it out, P-H-A-R-S-I-D-E-C-O-E-D-B-C at gmail.com. Or you can call us, 678-701-75. One, one and we will definitely tell you what our services are and what our packages that we offer we really want you to get your story out there I've also created um, and I'm gonna have it on my I'm gonna have it on our site I've also created what I call uncreate the verbal contract because you you had a verbal contract with yourself that somebody told you that you couldn't write. Somebody told you that what you said, everybody's done it before. Oh, it's nothing new. Oh, you know what? Nobody's going to read it. Oh, nobody. Hey, but the story keeps coming up. It keeps coming up. It won't stop. It just keeps coming up. That means you're supposed to do something with it. Even if you just journal it, at least put it out there. Somebody is waiting to, to read it, to be set free from the things that you have walked through, cried through, you have already paved the journey for them. It's just a matter of putting it out there so they'll know that they're not alone. That's our job. That's our job to help you decide which avenue is best for you. So please, by all means, email us, call us. We'll be more than happy to talk with you. But don't turn me off yet. Got some other stuff in there. Yeah. So we added another tier to our services. You see me over here pulling papers out until you, until you hear me. So <laughs> we added something that is so wonderful. First, let me tell you about my wonderful managing editor, Monica Leek. Monica Leek is an author. She's a poetess. She's an educator. She's more and so much more that you're going to learn tomorrow. But she's been doing this for five years, meaning every month, well, excuse me, Black History Month, what she does is that she actually uh, finds authors that write children's books and that she posts them on her social media site. She gives you the age group that is age appropriate for the book. Um, she gives you a little blurb about the book. And so she does it for 28 days. And so I asked her, I said, you know what? 
let's go live with that. I said, let's go live with that. And so she has put together a wonderful program, a wonderful show that she's um, asked and reached out to different authors and that they're going to be a part of what we call Far Side Folio Pop-Up. It's cute, isn't it? I like it. So... <laughs> Starting tomorrow, and 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 I'm I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of gonna jump ship a little bit here. Starting tomorrow, two o'clock, she's going to interview Xavier Clayton, and he's going to talk about his book. And you can get all that information at our Facebook page, Farside Coed Book Club or Farside B, uh, Coed BC. And please, 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 invite your children to watch with you. And that way you're able to build their libraries up and to support these emerging authors that are coming out with their works. And we want to be able to let you to let, let them know that we care about them because writers do matter. They, they really do matter. So Xavier Clayton is going to be at two o'clock. And then at three o'clock, we're going to have S.R.D. Harris. And her book is going to, is, uh, and, and her interview, excuse me, is going to be at three o'clock. And again, all that information right there on, on, on the far side page, share it with your social media people as well. And please, and, and please have your children because we want them to be a part of the, this conversation as well. Now, what I am proud of as well, Monica has been a friend of mine for years. We're not going to talk about how many, okay? We're not going, we're not going to mention none, but <laughs> long time. Um... I get a chance to interview her tomorrow at 12 o'clock to 12.30, again, on our page, Farside Coed Book Club, Facebook. Um, she's written two wonderful books. Actually, she's, she's done more, but these are her babies. And so her book books are the first one. It's called No More Hashtags, Reflections and Remembrance. The second one is No More Hashtags, Who You Call Them. And this is poetry. So all you poets out there, come on. Come on with us. So this, when I edited her book, the first book, I sat there with tears. Because these are about the people that were taken too soon. These were the ones that we read, it seemed like every single day there was always a, a police lynching. But I guarantee you, when you read them, it's not going to make you feel like, oh my God, this is just so, no, it's, it's not just that, it's remembering who they are. And to understand that the way she captured it in her poetry and captured their lives, you don't want to miss this. You honestly don't want to miss this. So tomorrow at 12, she's going to launch off the Far Side Folio pop-ups with her interview. And like I said, I have the most gracious opportunity and honor to interview her. So, my last call. If you're a writer and you're afraid to write, because you keep hearing these little voices in your head that tell you that you can't, it's time to sniff it. We're gonna we're going to uncreate that contract you made with those voices. Call us, email us, we'll talk about it. If you need a publisher, we're here. We're, our doors are open. We'll tell you about our services and you decide. If you want to be on our live show, please, this is not the last time we're going to do this for the month of February. We're going to do it March. We're going to do it April. We're going to do it May. We're going to do it all through the year. So please, if you want to introduce your book, even if it's already been published, that's fine. We, we just want we just want to get you out there. We just want to just people let you people know who you are and see you because we need to build our libraries up. And there's so many good works that are coming out and that are out. We just love to interview you so, uh, so you, we can just introduce you to another audience. And it doesn't matter where you're at. I don't care. It could be United States, across the world. It doesn't matter to me. 
we would just like to interview them so that we could just keep keep it going keep it going keep these, these live interviews going and just to tell our story okay again social media we're found we have our page on instagram farside co-ed book club spelled all the way out here on on facebook Farside Coed BC. You can email us farside coed bc at gmail.com or call us 678 701 7511. I think that's it for this evening. I'm not going to hold you any longer. It's a Friday night. So some of y'all may have a hot date. You know, you never know. Or some of you just want to read with a glass of wine. Sounds good to me. So I thank you for your time. I really do. I appreciate it. I don't take it lightly. I thank you for allowing me to share Farside's journey and story with you. And now I hope you can share your story with us so it can be shared with the world.